Hey, hey everyone, <laughs> it's Karen Margulis here and uh, this week's video is a focus on painting minis. And as promised, I'm gonna talk, walk you through the whole process of painting a mini pastel. So first let's define what is a mini pastel. For me, I call it a mini. It's an artist trading card size, which is uh, two and a half by three and a half inches. Can you see it yeah, over there? That's good. I don't want you to have to move the camera Just too much, yeah. like this. So two and a half by three and a half inches. Um, also often called ACEOs, which stands for Art Cards Originals and Editions. And they were, they still are, uh, artists paint them and trade them. So the ATCs, those are originals, and the others can be original or might be prints. So the reason why I select the two and a half, and they're two and a half by three and a half inches standard size. And the reason why I select this size for my minis rather than any odd size is because so many um, supplies are available to us as artists in that size. So you can go to uh, online, any art store, and you can get caught, you can get papers already cut that size. You can certainly get frames. So here we have a frame that is made for two and a half by three and a half. You can have mats cut. I on eBay get mats cut with the opening two and a half by three and a half. You can get bags to store them in. So here are the clear bags, uh, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. So I choose a standard size two and a half by three and a half simply because it's easier to get frames and supplies. If you want to paint a small painting in an unusual size, then you're harder to store them and frame them and that kind of thing. <clears throat> so that's what I, when I say mini, I'm talking about artist trading card size, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, so let's talk about supplies that we need. Now I have a, a dedicated kit for my minis. Uh, these are the pastels that I use. I call them my box of bits. And all they are are little tiny pieces of pastel that are basically leftover bits. So in other words, when you're painting and your pastels get worn down into little bits and nibs, instead of throwing them out or reconstituting them, I throw them in this box. So I have a nice collection of smaller, uh, broken pieces, that kind of thing. Now, it works really well for me because I make use of the bits. But if you're new to pastel, you obviously you only have nice, big, new, uh, fat pastels that you're not going to want to break into pieces. And you can easily paint a painting using a full-size piece of pastel, um, and which I'm going to show you. Although, I forgot to pull out a box of full-size pastels. So while I'm making the transition, I'll grab a box. Um, <clears throat> because you don't need to use tiny pieces. Because the idea of a mini is to suggest detail rather than be painstaking with detail. So in other words, people are surprised that I don't use pastel pencils or, or um, hard pastels because I want to get detail. And I don't want to get detail, I want to suggest detail. And I'll show you that when I, do <clears throat> when I do my little demonstration. So pastel, you can use full size, you can use little bits and pieces, but you don't have to use necessarily hard pastels or pastel pencils. Uh, let's talk about the paper. Paper, I like to use just scraps of paper that I cut into two and a half by three and a half pieces. So I order my paper full sheets, like 18 by 24, and then I cut it to the size that I like. Um, so if I want to paint large, I have large pieces, and then I cut it to smaller pieces, and I always have strips left over, and I'll cut those scraps into two and a half by three and a half inches and I always have paper ready to go when I'm in the mood to paint a mini. Uh, I paint minis just for fun, just as relaxing and as you can see I'm, I sit down when I paint so it's really easy to, that's my studio cat Jenny, I, in case you're new, uh, this is Jennifer um, and she likes to hang out with me. But I like to paint minis just for relaxation, and sometimes I'll paint them as studies for larger paintings. So I like to have uh, scrap paper on hand. Um, after I do the demonstration, I'll talk about how I store them. Um, but um, right now, I'm going to just show you a <clears throat> demonstration of a mini. Before you zoom in, though, Michael, um, I want to show how I attach my paper. 
to the board. So I'm using a, just a scrap piece of foam core board. Um, and it, it, when I'm traveling, I'll just use clips, bulldog clips or binder clips, and just that's like less things I have to carry with me. But when I'm at home, I like to use paper uh, tape hinges. Now you can see the hinges are already in place. Um, that's because I like to reuse them. So they're still sticky, so I just press the piece of paper down and I'm good to go. So the hinges work for multiple um, paintings. So how do you do hinges? Here's a piece of paper. You take your white artist tape, you sticky side up from the back, so you want the sticky side facing forward, and then you tape that down. So I'm going to put it on the board, press it all down, and then I have another piece, and I just place that over. And when I'm done with the painting, I simply peel it off the tape, Mm, simply. <laughs> and there you have it. You can reuse those tape. Alright, so why don't you zoom in on this, Michael, and I'm going to grab a uh, box of batter pastels that I forgot to do. I'm trying to be organized. Okay. What I'm going to do is show you the step-by-step -step method that I use to paint a mini. The first order of business is to draw the big simple shapes. And you can draw with anything. I'm just going to draw with a hard pastel. And here's my, is this a good, okay. So I just have, a, this is a um, field filled with um, blue bonnets. But they could be really any purple flower. So since it's about to fill the blue bonnets, I'm going to put in a higher horizon line. I have some shapes of some bushes or shrubby, um, scrubby stuff. And then I have some, a nice sunlit meadow. And then I have these wonderful blue bonnets that I'm going to bring up into the distance. So the first thing that I'm going to do after I draw in my big simple shapes is I'm going to block in the darkest darks. So when I look at this painting I see or picture, I see that the darkest shapes are the bushes. They're the upright planes. So I'm going to use, now this is how I'm doing it. I'm use, this is a hard pastel, but it really doesn't matter. It's the right color and value. I'm using, holding it, and I'm using the, the side of it. Now, the question that... Zoom in at the end. Okay. The side of it like this. Hold it like this. The question that I get oftentimes is, how do I get the big fat pieces to do all the little tiny marks? <clears throat> and the answer is practice. <coughs> Excuse me. The more you practice, the more you will get the feeling, and that's really all it is, as to how much you have to push down on the paper to get the mark you want. And I, uh, I was thinking about how to explain this this morning, and, and I came up with this uh, idea. It's kind of like learning when, you, when you're learning to play tennis and you want to get better at your serve. What do you do? You practice your serve over and over and over until it becomes feel, natural feeling. Same way with making little marks with a big fat piece of pastel. The more you practice, the more you will refine how you have your fine motor coordination. The first time you do it, it's going to feel awkward. So don't give up because it feels awkward. So that's step one, block in the dark. So I have all the dark shapes that I want. Notice my darks are connected. I want to have a nice solid connected dark. The next thing I'm going to do is block in my lightest lights, and that's going to be my sky. And I'm going to use a big fat pastel to show you that I can take a big fat stick, this is a Terry Ludwig, and just by feeling my way through it and manipulating how much of the pastel I put down on the surface, I can easily block in or paint with a big fat piece. I can look at it, if I tip it up on, its, on the side, I can even kind of dig down in and kind of create a more interesting um, silhouette with the, with the bushes. So it's just how you manipulate it and hold it, and, the, and that will come with practice. So I've got my darkest darks, my lightest light. Now I want to put in my most intense color. And this is just one way to start a painting. And if you follow me, you know that there's not just one way, but this is a good way. So I'm going to block in the most intense color, which is the purple of the, the um, blue bonnets. They really uh, have some purple in them. I'll just add a little bit of blue 
as well so mix a little bit look at how intense I have it and this is in the underpainting or block in stage then the next thing that I do for this technique is I block in a middle value and you, uh, the idea is to fill in the entire piece of paper so I have a couple spots where I have no pastel and I'm going to assign it some just sort of middle value and I'm going to put in what I like to call the dirt in other words what's going to go underneath the grass so I'll just put in a mauve color to represent the dirt that's underneath all the grasses that are going to come. I actually want to make this a little bit darker down in the foreground. So that's the first layer. And then the next thing that I do is just simply build upon the first layer. So I'm going to reinforce the dark areas. So I'll go ahead and add some green to those bushes. Again, I make the marks that I want because I've practiced enough that it is feels right. I want to push those bushes back so I'm adding a little violet to them. Dull them a little bit. There's no secret, there's no trick to getting the, the um, pressure that you want. It's just simply practice. So if you thought you were going to tune into the video and find the secret for creating tiny marks with a big piece of pastel, there's not really anything that I can tell you other than just practice. The more you do, the more types of marks you make, the, the, uh, the easier it will become and the more natural it will feel. I think before I do anything else, I'm going to um, add a little color to the sky. I just made the sky all one big color, all one shade of blue, and I really want there to be a little variety in the sky. So I'm going to add a little lavender to the horizon line, and then I'm going to come back and add a, just a couple other sh blue pastels just to give a little variety to my sky. Okay, now the next step is to start to add the grass. So I started in the distance with kind of a duller, uh, lighter green, so that way I can push that little um, strip of grass back there into the distance a little bit. Oops. And I'm just going into my box of bits now, and I'm going to pull out some a little bit more intense green, and a little bit, and I'm leaving my. Uh, blue bonnets kind of that I put in in the underpainting in place but I will come back and refine them. Remember it's uh, all about suggesting detail and not painting detail. So I'm using the side, I'm adding a warm green in the foreground. I'm adding, I'm using the side of my pastel and I'm making marks like this. I'll do it on the scraps. So you can see this is the type of marks that I'm making. I'm not making individual blades of grass. Now I'm going to come in and at, this is the point in time where I'm going to make some finishing marks. So I'll add a bit of light to my trees with a little bit of a warmer green to give some sunlight to the trees. And then I'm going to come and refine some of the blue bonnets. Now because this is so tiny, I'm not going to actually paint individual blue bonnets. This is too too small of a, of a painting for me to get in there and get too nitpicky. But I will put Thanks. I will put in just a few tiny little marks with a harder touch. So I'm put, pressing down hard right now to give a suggestion of the shape of the blue bonnet. So can you see these little marks right in here? And I'm putting them so that they lead the, oops, my little bit broke. Now I have a really little tiny bit. I'm putting them in so that they lead the viewer back into the distant, um, tree line and I'm going to just reinforce the light that's coming behind there and just kind of smudge it a little bit with my finger and I think I'll make one final bright blue mark I'll take my big fat pastel so that you can see you can take this big fat one press it down like so and you get a nice feeling of blue bonnets or these could even be lupine lupin any any of those blue type of flowers and there you have it. That is the mini, but now what, what do we do with it when we're done? Well, I do that to get the dust off of it, wipe my hands, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it, and I like to store it in these clear bags. 
and I already cut one. So you get these clear bags from clearbag.com or you can get them at <coughs> any art online art store for artist trading cards. I cut a piece of scrap foam core board to, to fit and I slide it in there first. So my paper is not mounted. That just saves me a lot of time and money. You could, If you mount your paper, which is subject for another video, excuse me, <coughs> you would sl slide it in. <coughs> I'm going to slide it. <coughs> excuse me. I'm having allergies today. <coughs> slide it right in the bag on top of the foam core, like so. And then you can... <coughs> Peel the tape and stick it and voila you are finished or you could frame it what I like to do when I sell them is I put a little note on top so that people know to pull the painting out of the bag or, or rather cut the painting away rather <coughs> than pulling I always get this question so I'm going to end on this note doesn't the paint the plastic bag cause the paint painting to smudge or does pastel get on the bag now I'm going to carefully remove it now you see how vibrant that is right look at how red and green and vibrant that is I'm going to drag it out do you see pastel on the bag very very slight if any the painting is perfectly fine so while a little bit does come off it's not enough to ruin the painting and I can simply put it right back in like so and I'm good to go so 